It doesn't matter. Really I, mean, I mean, how many times in this day and age are you going to make a fighting forester reference it's in casual conversations? With internet defining me. With me, it's a lot. It, I do a lot. We, you're the man now, dog. You're the man now, dog. Yeah. You're the man now, dog. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Reverse the Verse Live. Uh, this time featured on featuring the rest stop futures with our mem with two members of our lower team. Uh, immediately to my right, we've got narrative director, Mr. Dave Paddock. Hello. And immediately to my left, we've got lead writer, Mr. Will Weisbaum. Hi. Hi. Great to, thanks for having us on, Sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. we want to do something a little bit different today. Um, oh, do you want us to go then? Yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm going to leave, and you're, you two are just going to. Uh, well, actually, in in many ways, I, I expect to kind of uh, uh, sit back. The sound is not okay. Let's see what's happening with the sound. We're going to keep talking, make sure the sounds okay. Yeah, Life from an aquarium. Anything important? Yes, yeah, that's right. Until we get this so, sorted out. So one of the things we're going to try to do today is is every once in a while we like to do an RTV that's more about process. That's more about the way that in which we do things. So we, we refer to them as game dev editions. Uh, in the past, we've had Jeremiah create concept characters. We've had uh, Josh Austria. Herman. Nightmares. <laughs> Nightmares. Um, we, we, once we had uh, producers on creating a, a, a roadmap schedule that was live. classic, yeah. And people were like, you're going to have producers come on and make a, a schedule? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, nobody else would do that. I'm like, I know. <laughs> and it was, and uh, it was utterly compelling television. For the most part. <laughs> but no, I was really happy we did it. Uh, today, uh, we're, we're going to try something like that again where you guys, uh, you guys have an assignment for, for 3-6. You have many assignments. But one, yeah, yeah <laughs> I was going to say, do you guys have one assignment? Assignment? One today, we're yeah. going to go home. But one of the things that you're working on for the upcoming 3-6, and of course 3-5 uh, just went live to everybody yesterday, and uh, I see the folks in chat talking about uh, some server issues and whatever. Believe me, everybody is aware, and we've got top people on it. I actually uh, don't know how tied into the 3.6 release this content is. It is something we're working on yes. during 3.6, yes. mm -hmm. our, our current, current, yes. our current well, quarter. One of the things that we're working on, and you'll see a little bit about it later on in ATV, is a, an explosion, an expansion of our modular rest stop systems. Uh, obviously, we've, we've, we've got the, I don't, actually, I don't know how many are active, active in 3.5 now. Uh, there's a bunch. There's the, all, there's all the there's Lagrange points. For right. Not all of them, but most of them have rest stops going, where you can go and hang out at the R&Rs and uh, buy stuff, sell stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, we're planning to, to not only expand to even more, but uh, change their design and evolve their design, make, make more modular elements, uh, make them more visibly, uh, v visually unique. Uh, and stuff like that. I know yeah. Andy Hilditch is doing some great R and D right now uh, with with new shapes and 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 uh, a new shape language for these things, so that they look more like spa space stations. Uh, yeah. Whatever space stations look like. Yeah. They've always got their own. Yeah. Ideas. Messing up their their silhouette. Yeah. The art team and tech team have been doing some amazing things with the procedural generations of these yeah. space stations. So. so while they're doing this, they often they have a request for you. What is that request from you guys? Yeah, so we were meeting with them uh, this last week, and uh, basically the idea was that right now, as, we, as Will said, we have the R&R &R rest and relax stops, uh, which are sort of our middle of the road franchise uh, type, type deal. And uh, talking with Ian and Eddie and the design team and stuff, they were basically like, you know, we're looking for a couple more variations as far as like um, companies, brands type thing, just to kind of uh, add some variety and some flavor to uh, some of the different ones that they're coming up with. So, um, so yeah, yeah, basically we have to kind of brainstorm and uh, we were kind of talking with them about what kind of parameters they had for us and stuff like that, which is usually part of the thing is usually that, you know, uh, in one of these discussions, they'll say, hey, we need this thing. And then we go, all right, cool. We can you know, uh, try and work up some ideas. But are there any things that you can kind of rule out immediately that would you know, help but guide us to make sure that the stuff that we're, we're generating like, fulfills your guys' needs as well as what makes sense for the universe and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that? So, um, so yeah, so basically, as we said, the R&Rs the currently are, are kind of the middle of the road uh, type, type uh, company. So, you know, could we come up with sort of a higher end luxury version company uh, or station type and uh, more of a lower end one? So uh, that's... And, that, and that's usually the kind of approach we take is the high, middle, low. It gives us a good breath, at least for a first pass of yeah. stuff rather than coming up with like 50 different variants. We say, what's, 
what's the high end fancy version of something, what's the low end you know, messed up version, what's the middle of the road. And that gets us a good breadth to start with. And then there's always room later on down the line to start filling in more of that flavor to add more companies, but at least to start, it's a great place to go. Um, so right off the bat, uh, are these truck stops or rest stops? Uh, we, we, our, our own development team tends to use the, uh, the, the, the term inter interchangeably. Yeah, like yeah we, we're, we're trying to do a rebranding uh, internally to make sure that people stop using truck stop because truck obviously is not really what it is. Space, space, truck. space truck, space truckers, but it's not yeah. quite the term that's honed in on. In general, yeah. it's more kind of these rest stops, especially right. for how people are using it and the breadth of people who go visit these locations in the universe. It isn't just for these long haul uh, space truckers per se. Everyone needs to stop at these things out there. It's how you refuel, it's how you, yeah. you know, if you're in a single seater, it's how you go to the bathroom. It's yeah, stretch your legs. Walk around. <laughs> it's hard because uh, doing weekly shows convey, you know, covering development, uh, conveying the things that we're working on in ways that people understand. You you look for as many attachments to the modern day as you can. I think that's where yeah. truck stop <laughs> came in. It's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a truck stop. Like I mean, some, a lot of the, the references that we were using initially when talking about them was actually, it was um, uh, Iowa 80, which is a very big, I think it's actually, it might be one of the largest, if not the largest, mm -hmm. like uh, truck stops in, on, I think it's actually Iowa 80 highway. Uh, but, um, and, and on the sort of New Jersey Turnpike on 95 on the East Coast, like those um, kind of standardized rest stops that you come across where it's like, you know, they have the KFC or the McDonald's mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, uh, just to give you kind of two varieties that you could, that we drew from. Uh, so like those were the more kind of standardized, because they always kind of look the same, they just have different kind of amenities. Right. Uh, and then like you there's have, one company out there selling designs for truck stops around the country. Yeah, and they're <laughs> populating them with, you know, uh, whatever restaurants and, and stuff like that. So yeah, those were sort of the original uh, kind of kickoff type thing. But yeah, hence why it was very common to just have them internally be known as truck stops. And then we we're like, so one of the ways that you guys uh, work is through uh, shared documentation, uh, like uh, Google, like like uh, Google Docs, for instance. Um, I can already see mm -hmm. if Jade, if we can bring that up on the screen for just a minute. I can already see that you've got a Google Doc. Uh, started here. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. What are we? What, what, hey, there's Michael Keaton. Didn't we have Michael Keaton the last time we did? Yeah, we always start any kind of rocket yeah. project we do by finding which Michael Keaton are we using as a touchstone for this. In this yeah. case, it's Michael Keaton from <laughs> Spider-Man: Spider Homecoming <laughs> as, as the whole. Like I didn't, re I didn't remember that until I just saw that. I'm like, and I'm like, literally, it's like the last time we did this was just like two, three years ago. <laughs> I feel like that we had a lot of Michael Keaton photos. Didn't we? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a steady stream. I mean, it was a it was a dense topic, so we were we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was the Michael Keaton inspiration. Mm -hmm. So that was sort of the thing. It's like, are we going clean and sober? Or are we going Mr. Mom? Like, I, that's you know, a tough choice because I love Mr. Mom, but clean and sober got him an Academy Award nomination. So. Yeah, so it's it's tough. I mean, or you could go with later stuff like yeah. Out of Sight, which I don't know. So yeah. like, if the Vultures are an R are an R rest stop, we have to figure out you know who is our Jack Frost rest stop. <laughs> Um, well, that's the low end. The Jack Frost would be the low end. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so we, we have our initial notes that we kind of took down from meeting with the art team and kind of bullet points to keep in mind of when we're going forward. You know, so like we said, r and is the middle of the road. We have to figure out kind of what is our higher end, lower end experiences. And then one of the limitations, like Dave was talking about, is that the base building blocks for the procedural generation are going to be relatively similar. So they told us to think more about it will be like a rebranding color and stuff, but the base architecture of the space stations we shouldn't expect to wildly deviate, at least for now. For us to be able to build quickly in the next few quarters, they're going to keep us in check. So we couldn't per se come up with, oh, this rest stop is all glass and you're in a big glass ball and you look yeah. out and you see everything, which might be totally awesome. But for now, that's a limitation that we're imposing on ourselves as we think of these. All right, so uh, yeah, so tell you how do you how do you start this process? So that's what we were doing. Yeah, <laughs> let me keep going. Let me keep going. I'm glad you interrupted to tell us to keep doing <laughs> what we're doing. Well, yeah, I mean, normally what we do is also is, is we basically just sit quietly and listen to Spotify <laughs> work. So, which is what we're going to do for the next hour. So, All right, cool. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, usually again, like we 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 going off of the kind of the parameters, the boundaries that that we've been established, is sort of 
talk high level, what's the sort of initial flavor? And, and you know, we got some of the questions down here. What's the sort of experiential difference going to be between these? Why would someone choose to go to one brand over another? Uh, you know, uh, do our existing brands work for these? Which is actually kind of an interesting thing too, because you know, we have a lot of companies as it is, and it's sort of it's easy to kind of go like, oh, we'll come up with something new, and but at the same time, like that's not necessarily the best way to go because it's like, as opposed to, ha I mean, we have hundreds, if not a thousand companies like, <laughs> in creation at the moment. So like why- The, the corporation matrix was it's impressive a, when I started here over four years ago. Yeah. It's, it's only grown. It's, it's not a- so, so it's kind of like when we first started talking about this experience in space, the big focus- A few years. Keep, keep talking. Uh, a few years ago, it was all about the fuel stations about how were ships going to refuel in space. And so some of you might remember an old portfolio where we wrote up all these companies. We had CTR, we had uh, Cry Fuel Astro. Pump, Cryastro. And Cryastro we had in game for a while mm -hmm. where you would go there, you would land and be able to refuel and repair. But then along the way, it started talking about, well, we want people to get out of their ships more. We want them to have more of experience, have this collection of these shops. And that's when we started developing R and R. We came up with all this branding for what these rest stops were going to be. But now we're wondering: all right, if independent, just solo kind of fuel stations aren't really as much as what design wants anymore, mm -hmm. are is that a good opportunity for us to kind of shift what those fuel stations were into what these rest stops might become? So we could take a look at, say, like. You know, CTR was an interesting company because it was one of the first kind of Xi'an associated companies. And I was kind of thinking like maybe that would be real interesting to to put forth as kind of our, our high end experience is that they got this slight alien vibe going with them. They're appealing to humans on a different kind of connection way. And, and maybe that's what they're doing. Um, you know, we already had Cryastro. How does Cryastro fit into this? Is, are they a good candidate? For anything, they were kind of bare bones, but uh. yeah, it's so a sort of with them. It, one of the things that was kind of appealing about what, possibly running with them as a, as a potential company was that idea of you know you, you gas stations now start to have more and more amenities. You know, uh, particularly if you're if you're you know doing kind of highway travel and stuff like that, where they'll have um, you know a little deli, uh, sometimes a full restaurant, you know that that type of thing. So it's like, did it? it it's off the cuff, it seemed to make sense that Cryastro could be a potential candidate to, to, mm -hmm. to throw out there because, because again, it's still this is these are amenities for travelers. So they're traveling through space, so you know, and they want to get you with their gas, so they give you a place to stretch your legs or go to the bathroom or take a shower, or stuff like that. From a player perspective, there's also, uh, I, I think, a, 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 some level of emotional attachment to Cryastro because you know, ever since 2.0, when 2.0 launched in the end of 2015. I mean, Cryastro was one of the first space stations we we we, we ever saw besides Port Olisar. So it's it's as the as Star Citizen continues to develop, and you're just adding more you're just adding more micro as Star Citizen continues to develop, and more corporations come in and and they go. It's one of those you always remember your first kind of things. I, th I think there's yeah. lots of well, there's a lot of we can do to Cryastro. A lot of crime with Cryastro, too, if I remember correctly. There, there, there were some protests around Cryastro at one point, if I remember correctly. <laughs> well, we also have, like, if I'm wrong, we, we have the CTR logos, like, in-game all over the place. Like, it's that circle yeah. blue and white and red logo. Yeah. So. Um, but we don't have it actually represented as a company that you can go do anything with. Someone, we made a lot of logos early on for these companies that we thought we were going to have, and then artists and UI people grab them to use as props. And so now we have the CTR logo in game. So it's always nice for me to think like, oh, hey, can we actually have this mean something and bring it in that way? Well, there's something, I mean, actually, you know, and again, I mean, you know, this is again, sort of the, the, the process is the interesting thing actually about that is, is whether CTR might be an interesting candidate for sort of the higher end one because of their Xi'an influence. There's, there's, I mean, again, like the structure of it won't look very different, so maybe it's not the best served. Well, well, well maybe it's like uh, mist. You know, uh, mist doesn't look, don't look like Xi'an ships, but there's some Xi'an influence in their design. Yeah. So maybe a CTR station would have similar influences. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe there's just maybe the verticality. Pull the verticality. There could be. Yeah. I don't know if we can do kind of weirdo, 
artificial gravity stuff, not in the station itself, but like as sort of, yeah. That might be. Uh, right off the bat, there were there were when we first started talking about the subject, the chat was going off of like uh, like brand new stations. They want you know, alien stations. Yeah. So you know, maybe in the heart of Stanton system, maybe not. But if no. you could sneak in some Xi'an influence through something like CTR. Well, the thing that, that actually, I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting point, because I mean, one of the things that we've talked about with uh, the Banu particularly, and this was when we were kind of in the early days doing the, a lot of the star map stuff, was um, this idea of the Banu flotillas. So, uh, yeah. you know, I think we might have even talked about it, and I think the last time we were here, uh, um, where it was sort of inspired by the, the um, the raft in uh, Snow Crash, in the end of Snow Crash, where it was all the boats lashed together and, and stuff. Yeah, I know. never saw it. Oh, God. That's never awesome. saw it. I don't like snow. It's a boat, man. It's, it's coarse and it's, it's everywhere. Uh, I don't think I can get you. Too soon. Uh, but no, but just this idea it's of like. like 20 years. It's too soon. Keep going. Uh, but, um, uh, but the idea of like. The, they, they would, that the Banu would have these sort of like uh, space station marketplaces in space uh, where people would, got, would congregate to, to trade and, and stuff like that. And, and, you know, it would be interesting, again, once we kind of start, you know, visually diving more into the Banu to figure mm -hmm. out like, you know, are there design elements or visual cues that we can incorporate from their designs to kind of insinuate that like, you know, humanity sort of absorbed that influence into their to their thing, you know, uh, into how they build stations and, and stuff like that, because we do have that sort of symbiosis between the cultures, where it's like everyone's kind of like feeding off of each other and, and right. you know, uh, and and taking technology and and design stuff from each other. So, is is that an area that we could explore for for stations? Yeah, I mean, I mean, humanity's had contact with the Xi'an and the Banu for. Quite a long time by the time by the time we, we catch up to the star citizen universe and, and the game, yeah. so there's got to be all kinds of ways you know that, that that they've influenced even just human culture and human society. I mean, you already see you know the, the pe people walking around with you know uh, 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 Chinese or Japanese writing on tattoos and stuff like that. Right. People have never been to, right. to Japan and stuff like that, and so who have hopefully gotten a good translation. <laughs> hopefully. I mean, so maybe something to think about before we go through like assigning out the actual owner of the station is kind of that experience thing of like what what makes a low end station low end Let's and do it. and it's kind of easy to be like oh well it's it's crappier like it's dirty and it's yeah. like that but that doesn't actually like no one builds like their station to be like dirty like <laughs> so like it's not like is it that like do we say that maybe the low end stations you like food experience wise, maybe you would get like a lot of the chain restaurants at an R and R, like you would hit the big bennies. But because yeah. like these low end stations, I'm assuming that they would be placed either like far out away from made trade lanes, which is why they're kind of they're doing less business, they can't afford to do be as nice. They're a little smaller because they're not servicing as many people. They're maybe they're in frontier systems and so maybe like we separate out like what kind of shopping experience you would see there so like maybe it would be like vending machines yeah. or one kind of cafeteria restaurant and not a brand name restaurant uh, femship forever says i imagine the ones modeled after the new jersey t turnpike turnpike will be low end <laughs> they said Let let's get some suggestions in chat yeah. uh, uh, talk to us about what you think a low end uh rest I mean, stop what, would be it could just be sort of you know uh what kind of amenities you get uh are available to you like Higher end ones might have spas or showers or you know like kind of weirder. Wait, showers as a, as a high end? I, well, I mean, I'm just saying like, uh, yeah, naturally, of course, uh, being able to shower to rest up that's pretty, mm -hmm. that's pretty pimp. Uh, uh, Black Dragon Tooth says, everyone's got to have a coffee shop, even a low, even a low end's got to have at least a coffee shop. Well, that would be like maybe a coffee vending machine versus having like a Starbucks. boost emporium Fair that's Fair selling enough. all your energy yeah. drinks and like or an Elroy's or something. Yeah. Like, like like that the machine in a Terminator Two that does the playing cards on the side and the the, yeah. the fifth card is on the bottom. Yeah, just the, yeah. And the T one thousand stabs you. I remember those. Uh, Let's avoid that last part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, and again, like, what are the? Because it also might be. I mean, even too, like, there might be um, the types of NPCs that we populate the area with. You know, uh, 
whether there's there's a little bit more like would you go to a low end one where there's more po of a possibility of like you know picking up uh, shadier jobs. Uh, uh, Ticonderoga says uh, low end ones would be would have fewer personnel, more automation. Mm -hmm. You know, just like the vending machine, more yeah. more you know more more kiosks that do things instead of people because they can't because they can't afford to hire. Yeah. staff and rotate out staff well and it might even be that thing too where it's like the uh if there's there's uh counters store counters and stuff like that that there's plexiglass between you and the person rather than uh right. and i mean this this is all kind of purely visual stuff that the art team would help yeah. work out but like those types of things immediately kind of seem like it's more fortified rather than you know that sort of they they're protecting against yeah. uh you know, people flinging yeah. bottles and stuff. For me, I, I think I think low end. Like you, you made a good point earlier. Where you said it's not necessarily run down. It's not necessarily beat up. It has to do with. Oh, I blow up. Okay. All right. Good idea. Well, uh, for me, it's it's not just run down and beat up. It, it's it's more about investment. You know, different companies mm -hmm. will invest different amounts in in things like in all kinds of ventures, adventures, including rest stops. Like you could see something, see something like a, like a higher company is like, okay, we want to build. The, the greatest rest stop in the world. You know, we're really trying to innovate. You've mm -hmm. seen some of these rest stops in the world that look like Apple stores, you know, in, right. in, in some ways. And then you see the, you know, the, the smaller companies, you know, lower end can be a smaller, more independent company that's just trying to get into the rest stop game. Well, and it's not about being run down. It's just they don't have enough, the money for a lot of the amenities and a lot of the features. I mean, or, or conversely, it could be a, a really major company that's just like, we're just going to spend as little money as possible to turn as much of a profit as possible. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they, again, like, it, yeah, it's exactly. So I think where it's not necessarily, this is a dingy, dirty, run, you know, broken apart thing. It's just, it's cheap and uh, not, you know, not built with care because they're trying to. <laughs> I, keep, I keep going back to like fuel pump is one of the existing fuel stations we have. Mm -hmm. And like their whole thing was this kind of like retro tinge attitude already. Like they almost had. Like, would you say like a 50s kind of that was vibe? A, the, like, but like the, the retro version. futuristic yeah. version of it, which might be kind of interesting to, like, I don't know if it's too much of a double down to have like a retro theming on top of like kind of a rundown station, whether that just makes it feel old or whether that ties into better, like, hit that feeling that you want when you go in. Well, the thing I, I keep wondering though, when we talk about doing that, the retro thing, like, like from our perspective, it's you know it, it, it's the equivalent of like yeah a 1950s themed gas station. But like, there's something I, I kind of always grapple with whether it's fun or just kind of too mind melty of like a retro thing in. This the is what the 24th century, century was like for exactly. these people. Like, like we come up with a 20. This is a 27th century, a classic 27th yeah. century gas station, and everyone goes, oh god. Yeah, I remember the days, you know, right. uh, and but it's something that's very weird, still very weird and foreign to us. But uh, to we we set it up in the universe is like to them that's kitschy. Like we come up with our level of and that's right and that's a little bit hard for us in the current art direction too, because a lot of times we do yeah. retro, outdated tech is a sign of like older anyway. So like to have retro tech makes the station feel older to begin with. Like if you look at some of our like lower end locations, we have those kind of more CTR monitors, which is a fun mm -hmm. kind of bringing back that retro sci-fi feel from the art direction of it. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a tough pickle. Yeah, it's a weird, it's a so weird maybe one. that's not a good option for us. Maybe because it gets too muddled between what is theming and what is actual. Uh, yeah, and I think it's also the thing too of what you had said about there's there's kind of a lot of art debt that would need to be done in order to sell it correctly, mm -hmm. which is all unique stuff. I mean, it's interesting, like one of the things that I usually get asked about in, in the Ask of Devs is it's like, you know, oh, wouldn't it be awesome to get like the antique ships? Like we've, we've always talked about this sort of thing right. of like, you know, what are the, the ships from the 25th century? And like, yeah. you know, I want the old beat up jalopy personally. Yeah, I want the Zeus, I want all, you know, yeah. and, it's, and it's like, that would be totally sweet. But for our purposes, all of them are new ships whether it's a 25th century ship right. or it's a, a 30th century ship, they're all, you know, uh, new things that require a whole bevy of tasks and, you know, design and animation and art, blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's, it's 
still tough to do. We can come up with it. It's easy enough to just come up with it and drop it in a, a, a lore post, but like the, the realization of it becomes a different matter. So like coming up with the kitschy, you know, Bennigan's like art crap on the wall that throw, is a throwback to a different era means a thousand new props that we don't necessarily have the bandwidth. And Cor Corbin Jones in the chat says, I want to see a big Benny's restaurant. <laughs> uh, hold on to your butts. <laughs> Uh, but uh, there, something that's that's popping to my head is like maybe the high end experience is that rather than the R and R, which has all these kind of like brands that come and open up shops inside of it, so you get like the live fire or whatever opening up inside the R and R. Maybe the high end one is all proprietary branding, like when you go to like a really high end department store, like. Target will put a McDonald's or a Pizza Hut inside their shop, but a high-end department store has their own cafe and restaurant. That's their own branding. Oh, so whereas you get all this like weapon and clothing experience, let's say for argument it was CTR, when you go inside, there's no other brand. You have all this stuff, and they just say like clothing in a fancy like scrolling font, and it's theirs, and they own the experience it's from sort, top to bottom. It's almost like a duty-free thing at the airport, where it's, yeah, like, yeah. it's just it's a bunch of the products and made by the people that you know, but it's not a center mass store it's just it's a their section for ship weapon uh some of the high-end malls shopping malls in southern california fashion island uh, down in the uh, south coast and uh even the the century city one up here they're both open air they're both open air they don't they don't have or can't do that in space well, no, <laughs> open air, but, but, but glass domes but but, right. but the glass domes even the even the uh even the fancy, some of the fancy hotels in Vegas, like the Venetian and the Paris, right, right. have those sections where they fake an outdoor thing in, in, the, in the ceiling. Yes. I mean, that, that's a good point that maybe something that high-end stations would have is a lot more non-critical areas. Like we've talked about in the uh, procedural generation, the idea of like viewing windows. And so maybe we talked to Art saying that the high-end stations have a lot more, more viewing windows, a lot more stuff that is just kind of seating areas around whereas the, yeah the low end it's all like every single inch of that should be dedicated to profit generation or or money or something like that kind of yeah yeah so let's, let's let's see what you've got here jj let's, there you go see i didn't even have to ask thank you jj so what kind of shops would you expect these so low end so will's been making notes here you, we're working here this isn't yeah. just for fun <laughs> oh, yeah. For a fact, it's definitely not for fun. <laughs> um. Harsh. <laughs> Harsh. So what kind of shops would you expect? Less brand name restaurants, maybe a focus on vending machines, more automated services. So if we're saying more, more name branded shops in the low end, what separates the R&R &R, like shopping experience from the low end shopping experience? Is it just the variety that you'd get in like an R and R? Is it is it that like you're more likely to find like is it that low ends are just like a convenience shop and a weapons store? Is it like that all for one I, yeah, shop? To or? me, it feels like that one of those things where yeah, it would be like there would be fewer. Again, sort of what you're saying, like they would spaces at a premium, so they would jam as much in as possible to. They would jam enough in to lure people inside to try and get them to buy stuff, but not so much that they had to maintain a high kind of overage in order to keep their station open. So it's like, you know, like one of the things I was thinking, it's, they, it's mostly fewer live people we were talking about earlier, so mostly terminal interactions. We're not dealing with, you know, even if it's like a Big Benny's where it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, kind of what we had. So see if we can even maybe even use that setup from like the... the mess hall like the you push in a right. thing and then a you know it poops out your your big bennies noodles that's uh. the absolute wrong word to use for a food service <laughs> I've, I've never worked in the food service. Uh, well, i have but no i mean but that type of thing where it's like you 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 know uh i mean that was actually an interesting thing in the uh uh the seoul airport there's like the the restaurants you just you order through a terminal, mm -hmm. uh, which was really interesting. And yeah. we got we, we got that at McDonald's now. You go into McDonald you go to the McDonald's just three blocks that way, and there's terminals. And then really? you, you order on the terminals now. Hmm. And it gives you a little number, then you go up and 
for yeah, you. Yeah. They're, they're, they're reducing the amount of time you have to interact with human beings. I love it. Uh, so we talked about CTR as a potential brand for the high end. Is, is, do we have another consideration besides CTR? Is there another brand? It would probably be for scratch at that point if we didn't do it. I think from yeah. our existing stuff, Cryastro doesn't quite feel. No, that, that feels metal to me. Yeah, it would be a competitor with R and R, oddly enough, which is unfortunate for yeah. Cryastro because right now we don't need a competitor for R and R. But down the road, we don't want R and R to be the only game in the thing. No, we totally. Want people to be yeah, able they to should have some competition. I mean, yeah, it feels like it would be sort of like I mean, kind of you brought up the Century City thing, like Westfield, you know. Yeah. Uh, it feels like we need a Westfield, like a corporation that just specializes in creating in creating rest stops and plopping them around yeah. around the world. Because uh, it might even be something too. Where it's again, like you know, we have some of these are going to be offering obviously fuel repair options mm -hmm. and rearm and stuff like that. Where it's like they could be saying like, you know, it, uh, CTR is the fuel provider for the station as a way to say right. like, hey, you know, we're we're sparing well, no expense. Then you got things like Costco. Though Costco does their own. You know, they, you know, Costco started as a warehouse store and then they got into gas and they got into automotive service. Right. They, they they expanded into their own brands for all these things. Yeah, that's a good point. So they they, they, they didn't con in, maybe they did contract out for people, but they're like, no, we're not using your branding. You're using our branding. I don't know who gives Costco their gas. It could definitely be like interesting to to provide more of these kind of non-essential services at the high end thing. So that's not only like cl clothing stores you're less likely to find at the low end, but at the high end one, the hair salons. But maybe the difference is that like a high end facility will have a full kind of medical treatment center. Like, oh, so if you needed to get patched up, it would make sense for a high end one to be able to support like actual, the in-depth have the big machines like right. you would find on the ship, the hospital ships and stuff like that. So whereas like the surgeries maybe. Well, yeah, the plastic surgery stuff. Whereas the low end ones, maybe that's where you go and you get a, you're lucky to get a couple med pens or like a bigger med kit overall. Or there'd be a vending machine where you can find <laughs> jam yourself and hope that you can stay alive long enough to go to a nicer place. Like the, the idea with the low end is you're just stopping here briefly before well, moving on. I'm almost wondering if, if maybe the idea is with the low end stuff that it's, it's more convenience store. And like like the the high end ones, Strip okay. Well, it's just it's they they sell multiple things. The stores tend to send, sell multiple things rather than just being what, dedicated. What's, what's that franchise in the in the east? Uh, the the uh, scrunchy, squanchies, something. It, 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 it's more. red. It's it, 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 Oh, in Philly. I I, I, I hit it in, in it was sought in Pennsylvania and in Maryland when I was there the, oh, uh, at the beginning um, of this year. Uh, uh, foodies, uh, what's what's it called, people? It's, it's in it's in the it's in the, the east. It was in Maryland. It was in D.C. It was in Pennsylvania, and they, they had they had these automated food kiosks. It's close to Wawa, but it's not Wawa. Although Wawa is a good example, uh, we I went to these kiosks and I was able to order uh, 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 sheets. That's it. Thank you, Sir Wiley. Uh, sheets. You ever been to a sheets? I've never been to a sheets. They got these kiosks. It, it's a whole thing. It's it's just like you, literally what you just described for the low end. Uh, it was sheets and and they, and their kiosks to were Google. able to make uh, these food monstrosities. I was able to get like hamburgers with mozzarella sticks in them and French fries inside the hamburgers, and you just make these terrible food monstrosities, and you don't have to look anybody in the eye <laughs> when you're doing it. You just order it, <laughs> and then so then you just kind of wait, and they they call a number. They don't they don't take your name. It's a number, so there's no personally identifiable uh, aspects to. To 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 to, to uh, get shamed for this terrible food construct construction oh, that you yeah, ordered. Oh, yeah, sheets. Like, like if this is like a, a low end brand, Buck and piece. we and we've also talked about outside of the brand, like the branding that we're going to come at first. We're also going to the idea is that we would also be able to do mom and pop stations down the road as well. That that there this is Jared's rest stop that isn't tied into this bigger company isn't mm -hmm. part of the conglomerate. It just has weird stuff and it's a little random station. And that's no, that's not an in for Chef Disco. <laughs> then where does he? That's where he cooks. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, but th this will be more of that kind of branded experience. I mean, it's interesting to me if we gave him like an official tie-in with Kelto, which is our big convenience store. Do we have another convenience store? You have to troll. No, um, not at the moment. But like the always like you go you go to this landing place. It's like the ha well, I I keep using just, American references. Do we just make the Kelto? Late. Do we just bite the bullet? Make the low end Kelto? I was, I was, my next question was we've we've got a CT uh, a, 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 
company for the high end, we haven't had any suggestions for the low ends. I mean, well, may... Frisk Landing is the one that's called out. We've talked yeah. about more planetary, but they would call that as a low end specifically refueling service option. Um, CTR, I can't remember the last letter. Uh, but I mean, I just wonder, it's like if it if it just becomes if it just becomes Kelto, a we we start to establish because we haven't established them. We talk about them. We've been talking about them ever since Kid Crimson. I think was mm -hmm. the first drop of it. And, and we do like the idea of the convenience store. We're trying to introduce in some of our planetary locations as well. By the way, I'm going to give a plug for the Kid Crimson uh, uh, storyline. It's one of the one of the earliest lore stories that was released on the RobertSpaceIndustries.com website. It goes back to like 2012, early 2013. If you haven't checked it out, you should, because it's one of the things that got me into this project. So check out the Kid Crimson uh -huh. stuff. I'll sell it. You guys don't have to sell it. I'll sell it. Mm. It's what I'm here for. I'm the shill. <laughs> I'm the shill. So, like, Kelto, like, almost Walmart has their kind of gas station outside their own brand. There would be yeah. kind of that idea that Kelto has expanded out into these floating... Maybe they even got their start from offering space-based convenience stores, and it just became a natural thing, or owning, or they bought a couple after they opened up shops in them, right. and decided to manage them themselves and fully brand it out. Would it be weird then if it's a if it's, it's a Kelto a to have any other? Would the only store be in Keltos be the Kelto convenience shop, and they would have food vending machines and refueling options? I mean, we had said that they were, they, they kind of cover everything. They do, it'd be a little bit of everything. So you would only expect to be able to find like four guns and the three yeah, weird t-shirts. Or like maybe they just, they do rearming, like just ammo. Like Yeah, it would definitely feel like that gas station kind of vibe where yeah. maybe you could pick up headphones, but they're like weird ones. <laughs> and like... Right, they're knockoff, they're, oh. they're deets. Uh. It's definitely interesting. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, there's something happening here. No, no, I just I talk about. I, I got, I got, a, I got, a, I got, I got a thing sent to me in January when I was on vacation, and nobody thought to give it to me until today. Oh. So I literally just got it. It's been sitting in the storage since January, since I was gone. And somebody just gave it to me today, so I was just opening it. Oh, right now. So let's. No, what no, is no, it? Wait, no, keep, keep, keep it, we've been totally derailed. Let's just run with it. <laughs> Hi. Well, no, it has nothing to do with the show. I just wanted to. No, it looks. It looks like the JR Fabrications sent me one of their gray cats. Oh man, that is pretty. Yeah, the, the, the models. The models that they're doing. Like I, I saw everybody else on on Twitter get one, and I was a little bummed that I didn't get one. And then like, but I wasn't going to say anything. I was like, I was sitting there, I'm like, they didn't send me one. You know, I was actually sad, but I wasn't going to say anything because I mean, they, but they didn't send me. One. And then, and then today, and to, and today, because we got a, a new person up front. She goes, "I found this under a desk with your name on it." Huh. And I'm like, "Yeah, apparently I was sent one uh, back oh, in back wow. in January." Wow, I was sent one back in January. And it's That's just, it's just a little. Yeah, I didn't set this up. We don't have a we don't have a camera shot to to do it. But uh, you, you keep talking. I'm gonna walk up to the camera and see if I can show. Um, just ignore what Jared's doing, yeah, just ignore keep, what Jared's doing and keep talking about what we're talking about. Yeah, so it would just be kind of like confirming, we'll have to go back with design after this and see exactly, kind of hone in what services need to be offered yeah. in in a rest stop bare minimum. Like, does every rest stop need like TDD no, no, functionality? Do you all need to buy stuff? Or are we saying like, maybe these low end ones don't don't do that? Or can stuff like the TDD exist harmoniously with Kelto? Well, and also from... Uh, <laughs> oh, just keep talking. Keep yeah, talking. this is great, Jared. <laughs> they can hear what you're saying. I touch my mic? Oh. Cool. All right. Uh, Sorry, everyone. I apologize. You should have said something earlier, JJ. Um, um, hmm. Kelto. Kelto. I think you need to pull the trigger because you have been talking about this for six years now. Yeah. Oh, I remember. Uh, but also from, a, I mean, I guess the other question is, though, is from a gameplay perspective, um, yeah, whether these are supposed, should have, need to have uh, pickup drop-off points. So, like, do they need to have a, a Kovalex? But the, the Kovalex box would make sense inside there if it has a delivery locker to yeah, really yeah, fit yeah. in with the convenience store. The vending machine. Kind of vibe. Yeah. But follow-up note with design. We actually had a meeting scheduled 
with design to talk more about this stuff that got pushed a few days, not in time for our TV. So we tried to have more of these answers answered. Yeah. But this is the development process. We come up with questions, more questions. Um, Hmm. And Kelto is K E L dash T O. T O. With their hydrofrost. What, yeah, was that it, short for something, Kelto? I don't remember. No, I think it just sounded okay. Okay. But yeah, like they should be able to support, they, maybe they just wouldn't do commodity exchanges, which wouldn't be maybe an issue in some of the more out there places that maybe, which would make sense. It's kind of not a high traffic area. Like who's on, you might have to put also, on the extra work to lug your stuff to uh, a more populated area to unload your commodities. Like you've just been mining nearby. But conversely, I don't. I don't even know if like because you can't do commodity trading at the R and R. You can sell stuff at R and R. Yeah, you can sell drugs now in R and R. We have to follow up and confirm. <laughs> right. But oh, wow. they, like R and R doesn't have TDDs right now, and I don't think no. they're going to get it. Yeah. So yeah, we should. Just find out the economies of it. Yeah. No, oh, he's typing too. What about the idea? Uh, someone was talking. Uh, people, chat's been asking about things like Idris's and javelins and stuff, uh, and stuff docking at some of these. Would the, you know, obviously those those are civilian com uh, uh, commissioned versions of those ships. But w where would military ships? Is, is there are there are there military rest stops? Are, are, are there like, like like Air Force bases? I guess like yeah yeah there are there, there are military. I would assume stations. there would be military stations that like that's they run the security operations for the system or something. There'll be a naval base. Yeah, we we've talked about them mostly in in connection with uh, fair chance systems. Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll see if you go on the right. star map like right. OB Station Chimera, I think is one and stuff like that. But um, but yeah, I would assume that there would just be like. Naval. I and think probably, Seoul had some naval bases called out already. Yeah, they were probably. I mean, yeah. I don't know if they would be uh, sort of more automated. Whether they would have like auto, you know, automated kind of just fuel dumps that you that their ships would. But go this would down. tie into like kind of the reputation system stuff that we've been talking about now, where eventually you would do enough missions to earn a reputation as like a navy contractor to be able to dock and refuel at these places. I wouldn't expect just because you own an Idris that they would be like, yeah, park up. Exactly. No, not on a military yeah, station. Yeah. Absolutely not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it uh, makes me think of a good question about the Stanton system itself. You know, the Stanton system itself is kind of unique amongst most of the star systems in Star Citizen because these planets are individually owned by corporations. Mm -hmm. Does the system, uh, the, as a star system, with four supergiants that are all owned by individual corporations and all run their own individual security, is the Stanton system still policed by the UEE? I mean, yes. is, is it yes. it's still considered a... It's, it's still a UEE system. Um, and it's, it's, so, yeah, they're they they, they they are kind of militarily responsible for the space in between the planetary zones. Uh, which is pretty normal. Normally, like, advocacy is handling the interplanetary crimes that happen in a system. So the same is here, but they're really trying to limit how many, how much resources they make available to the system. They're telling the companies, you should be handling this. That was the whole point in yeah. selling these. Right. And so uh, you guys are kind of responsible for the... So minimal UEE presence in the, in the stand system. Yeah, that's sort of what we're running off of. And, and some of the planetary governments want there to be more, and some of them want there to be less oversight. And so it's kind of an ongoing debate between these four governing bodies. And some of our recent kind of, we just had a uh, Congress now, right? yeah Congress now that was doing like a Senate talk to um, kind of uh, the head of Crusader talking about their crime stats and how they're doing governing and so yeah Congress now another lore series available on the RobertSpaceIndustries.com website that you should probably be checking out which is weirdly popular just like also Star call Watch. your mother yeah make sure to read last week's Star Watch for all the latest info on celebrities and. Yeah. Star Citizen. That's such a such a positive feature. I know people keep keep clamoring for more. So, yep. so Kelto is kind of our top contender, which would be interesting if we went with like so they would be this heavily branded mono store, and in some way like we could do it where the high end was almost the same thing if we went with that they didn't have their own like franchises inside themselves that they just everything was them branded as well, but it would just be. The breadth of options we kind of out. Yeah, we could. I mean, we should check that. That, that might be a good thing to talk.
talking point to, to go over whether they want to do that sort of unilateral thing. Because I could also see it going the other way where it's that, you know, because we're, you know, star fields, we are allowing, you know, we have partnered with, you know, these luxury brands to mm -hmm. validate us. So it becomes that thing where it's like, because it, it's kind of currency. It's like coming to our mall because we have an Apple store and everyone goes, ooh, they have an Apple store. This place is really swank. But that, uh, oh. oh, go ahead. I, but that might be the difference. I'm wondering if they would have, like, their weapon section would have, like, a Max Ox display where they would have a bunch of Max Ox weapons versus having, like, a live fire that was doing that right. inside. Would it be more about the, the actual item branding that we sell? bearing a max ox versus we have a live fire and live fire sells whatever they sell in some of the higher end airports uh you, you they, 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 they they're kind of like what you've been talking about where everything has its own branding they're not brand they're all the shops have brands that you don't necessarily see outside in the real world but then right under it it's like it's like airwaves by shake and bake or you're, you're something like that, and, then, and it's tiny. It, it, it's, yeah. it's, they, they invite right. all these other companies in, but then they're not allowed to trade on their their branding their brand. you know, on the outside. So it's it's a whole different presentation. It's the way like a I've seen McDonald's or KFCs or whatever in airports that don't look like any McDonald's or KFC you see anywhere else. Right. They're they're individual installations of those things, and it's like yeah, operated by McDonald's. It's it's right. it's. Burger Town. I mean, that would be something that we could do where we could talk to Art about this that would really maybe help set it apart is we limit how much of the aggressive advertising that we do inside this rest stop. Like all the other rest oh, stops, you see billboards and posters and logos and neon signs everywhere that maybe when we use the wall break of art spaces, it actually is for art. Like you walk through and you see a potted plant with a nice yeah. like abstract painting and not like an ad for like the latest origin 300i or if we do have it we minimize it so yeah. it's more i mean it, it, it opens i mean again it opens up interesting doors kind of what you're saying before about like they they offer more relaxation luxury things and so would you have would there be an art gallery mm -hmm. or a view you know, like a viewing room where it's got right. a bunch of like uh you know the latest neo-imperialist abstract art uh or glass sculptures or whatever, which probably would be ill-advised because people would just drive buggies into them. <laughs> I, I, I missed the name. I missed, I missed the name, unfortunately, but it was, chat's going by too fast. But somebody said, what about the companies that we know for player hangers? Are they Revel in York and Aeroview? It's, yeah. If, if, if they're in the business of player hangers. That's a like good that. point. Um, at least the hanger sections or whatever, like, like may, maybe they... Uh, Revel in York would open up these rest stops. Or maybe not an entire rest stop. Maybe maybe they work to do the hangar portion of, of these rest stops or, or something. Like I that. I think with my concern about that would just be that then we're getting into a lot of kind of cross branding, like the the Westfields equivalent mm -hmm. with Rebel and your like right. it. I mean, again, this I could, this kind of what I think you're saying, Will. Is, the concern is just that once you have too many different brands in there, that the overarching umbrella station gets kind of lost in the mix because you don't care about that as much because it doesn't have its own personality. The personality is being dictated by the stores that are in it. Um, but I mean, having Revel in New York do uh, the stations is an interesting call. I mean, I, I, at the very least, I think they have to be a contender for the high end one. Mm hmm. I mean, it, it, in hindsight, it seems kind of obvious. We we already had our our player hangers broken into three tiers. Yeah. You know, with self land as the lower end and Aeroview as the middle. I think part of it would just be making sure, and this would be part of the conversation with Art, would be making sure that because Revel and York do have an established aesthetic, mm -hmm. uh, and would be making right. sure that whatever they're building for this would factor into it. Well, they haven't. They, they've built one. We've seen their established aesthetic for one kind of player in here. It's it's true, but it's, it's if it's just that thing of like because they do that sort of um, almost plastic uh, white with the brown wood yeah. and, and stuff like that, which is a very distinct uh, look. So it's it'd be sort of a question of like 
whether that is a through could be, be maintained as a through line or if we could just it's just a thing of uh, uh, different different Keaton I think uh, what is what, that from what, what, oh, that's uh, Michael Keaton as Dogberry ah from Much Ado About Nothing oh, that is right. correct that was to me the Michael Keaton I'm best not represented dog. Rebel in New York but maybe I'm wrong about that I'll yeah, keep searching you're definitely wrong about <laughs> that that might be the Southland Michael Keaton but uh, um, uh Underrated. But yeah, just a just a question of like if, because yeah, again, it's it's an interesting thing, and it, kind of going back to what we were talking about in the very beginning of this, that idea of like uh, tying it into stuff that the community already knows about mm -hmm. and its attachment to and an emotional reaction to. Because if we drop like, hey, it's a Rebel in York station, you know, people who are playing immediately get like, oh, cool, it's going to be a much nicer, higher end thing. Like we, a lot of our work is kind of done. You know, uh, I, I mean, the, yeah, this was one of the conversations we had with our, when we started doing these kind of stations is like, oh, who who's building the station? Mm -hmm. Like outside of REST R&R owning the station, they're like, what company manufactures, like what construction company would be hired to come out and haul this out? And it was starting to get like a weird level of branding that we didn't quite, people didn't need to know who who constructed the station. Right. We're like, it's yeah. just R&R &R, and like that, that's where we cut off the thing. One of those things, and this is probably way too early for this, but one of those things that you would find in the living, breathing universe with history is the thing where the station was made by one company, and then they got out of the space station business in that sector, and they sold it to another company. And, yeah. and so you've got somebody else's name now on something that's completely against their style because they, they, they bought it to operate it. Yeah. We, I mean, we've, we, we have talked about that sort of thing, because one of the things that we, we always talk about with... Uh, as sort of like the chronology of when a new system is discovered is that, um, you know, so they, they discovered, someone discovers a jump point, they sell the data to the UEE, the UEE sends in uh, sort of the initial kind of prospecting scouting team. Uh, they build a space station just inside the jump point that is sort of like their main base of operations. And while they go out and they sort of survey the system and figure out what's there and stuff like that, and then they have terraforming, you know, if they have terraforming candidates, then they go and they build uh, a station outside of that to house the, the terraformers as well like as maybe the, a BFG industrial station that, that type that of first stuff one. and then the question is like well what happens to those that initial space station that was there because that's their first point of civilization mm -hmm. in the system uh, so does that get converted into something else is it Grim still uh, no that was a uh, 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 workers station. Uh, but I mean the same thing it starts to start uh, what I'm saying it started oh, with life yeah. as one thing and then became another thing over time. Yeah, or or maybe it stays. It's a similar thing. It's just it's a it's a way station for people to who are making their way in or out of the system, stuff like that. So there's yeah, we, we we've kind of tried to figure out like how can we kind of insinuate or that history for some of these places that there's like like oh this this space station or rest stop was the original terraforming station in the system, and you know how do we. Yes, it's got branding and it's got stores now and, and stuff like that, but how do we insinuate that there was this history to it, which yeah. could be really fun. For everybody who spent the last uh, 55 minutes asking if players are going to get to own their own space station and stuff like that, I want to say that's a game design question and not something that's decided by members of the lore team. They're just Can I go ahead and make some promises? <laughs> <laughs> no? And drop right, some dates. Because so. you're not the one that gets in trouble for that. It's me. So. Uh, I, do, I do wonder what other kind of like we've talked a lot about kind of the flavor differences. Like we'll have to see with game design what kind of game design differences we can offer. Like we've talked about what kind of repair stations can do installations of parts. So would you be able to expect to buy a new weapon and have it installed at a lower end station? Or the only is that the kind of stuff that yeah. you're equipped for? Or are we kind of limiting I would, what kind I of repairs? Would say no, that like low end. One of the differences is. Again, like obviously we have to talk this over with design, but it feels like just instinctually that you would want them to just, they'll top you off. Like they can repair your ship, get you get, flying, get again. It flying again, and you can be out the door. But, you know, if you want to buy a new car stereo, like you're not going to a gas station to do that, you know. Uh, and, and maybe the fuel options is the other thing that we can introduce at the high end one where like we, we've talked, which is still in the design process about having different kind of benefits for different kind of fuels that you'll see like, mm -hmm. you know, well, maybe this is a quieter burn, more efficient burn, but lets you go for longer, or it's a faster versus other stuff. 
So kind Chevron of, with Teclon. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So maybe the low end station, you just buy gas and at the higher one, there's a full menu where you get to select exactly what kind of nuance you want there. Um, uh, Greyheart in chat is saying, uh, it seems to me that they're forgetting the purpose of real world stops. They were places for truckers and later families to pull over and sleep. Yeah, I have that called out in notes, like what kind of, like do all of them have rooms for rent? Yeah. Like we haven't done it in the R&R, &R, but maybe the high end ones have like the, whatever their version of the easy have is. Or maybe as the stations spread out with this new procedural generations, we introduce easy haves into the R&R. &R right, and, yeah. And we'll like do the different tiers of. Yeah, again, uh, it feels like the, the, the lower end ones probably wouldn't have that type of thing. Or they'd have the uh, the, 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 the the sleep cubicles that the they coffin. have in Japan. The you know, we just t okay. take, it, take the one out of the old 300i right. and just, just put a rack of them. Yeah, I mean, again, like there, there was a, the the Seoul Airport uh, was really interesting because they had a hotel inside the terminal mm -hmm. uh, that you could rent for like five hours or four hours. They do, they're they're converting an old terminal in uh, New York right now into a into a hotel. Oh really? In, into a, like an, an hourly not hourly but a short term stay hotel huh. right now. It's all got it's all got it's the old TWA terminal that they're converting. In LaGuardia or JFK? I think it's in JFK, but I'm not sure. But but one of the old TWA terminals oh. is being converted into a retro themed hotel for people that have, have layovers to stay over there and stuff. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I like I, I had a five, a six hour layover and I was severely contemplating like just because you could put your bag down, you don't have to like walk around and stuff like uh, yeah, it was really interesting. And yeah, the rooms are, I mean, they're very bare bones, but you know, you don't need much. It's like a bathroom, a shower and a bed and a TV. Yeah. So we are actually out of time. What? Already? Point. Already. Wow. So nice. um, let's go ahead and take a look at the doc. Let's, let's, see, let's see where we're at right now. Obviously, this is a process that takes longer than just an hour, yes. as, we, uh, as we demonstrated. But let's, let, let's, let's go through and let's see what we got. I mean, you, you can actually follow along with the, with the page there. So Jeremiah, go ahead. Or Jeremiah. Jeez, JJ. Wow. wow. I didn't mean to insult you that way. Everyone knows wow. JJ stands for Jeremiah James. It's too many J names in this company. So, so let's see. Let's scroll up a little bit. Jeremiah, let's see. So, so what kinds of shops would you expect in each? So we got so we're low end, less brand name restaurants, if maybe a focus on vending machines, more automated services, uh, more name brand stores, fewer live people, more terminals or automation. Uh, stores tend to sell multiple types of things. You know? And then of course the re realization that we've had Kelto sitting there for years and maybe this is, maybe this is where we finally pulled the trigger on that. And then of course you have follow-up notes for design. You, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta follow up with them and get their requirements. Like what are they, what are they envisioning happens in a low end station? Because you know the tail doesn't always wag the dog here. <laughs> no, no, yeah, totally. And again, I mean, again, with all this stuff, it's a, you know it's a process of like we we kind of bounce ideas. They go yes, no. How about this? We go ah, oh, sweet, that's cool, and incorporate it in and bounce around and yeah, just sort of around the round. Drop off points, economy of selling stuff. Do they need places to sleep? Uh, limited repair and refuel. Okay, let's keep going down, JJ. We got oh. There's high, there's, that's definitely a high end Michael Keaton. Yeah, thank you. All right. Is, it, is that Bruce Wayne Michael Keaton? It is. That's yes. Good. It's from, uh, wait, did you, Tim Burton's did you ask? That, 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 that's actually specifically from Batman Returns. <laughs> the Returns? Yeah, you can tell because of the color tint. Oh, uh, right. That's definitely a Batman Returns color yeah. tint there. So let's see, scroll down. Uh, can well, art? Glad we got to the bottom of that. Yeah, so <laughs> Revel in New York can art support a visual aesthetic with their work. Uh, because the the Revolving Art Hangers were developed quite a long time yeah. ago, and I think they were actually done uh, uh, with with a uh, part of that work was done by a Behavior at that time. Yeah. So, so diff different team working on stuff today. Uh, Emphasize closing non critical shops, clothing stores, hair salons, medical facilities. Uh, would these have rooms for rent? Proprietary brands would they have high end associations? More windows, non critical spaces. This is where I I think you really hit on things. Sunrooms for plants, art galleries, sculptures. I would love to see an art gallery. I mean, we have we have so much we have so much concept art for all these different systems and it would be great to you know they have a place inside the game as yeah. as visual represent artistic representations of real world you know or real universe star systems and stuff yeah and building that as a module so that like we could put it into the generation system would be pretty neat so that maybe yeah. it has like this music space with a water fountain and sometimes you end up with this art gallery and stuff yeah. like that how do you handle adver advertising in high-end station we don't want it to look like that uh, truck stop from from space balls <laughs> right although that was a very cool space uh, gus's guzzler yeah now that is a michael keaton from the first i actually uh, he was wearing the same troll next was probably also from, <laughs> from batman returns but 
Yes, I think that's the scene where he uh, is remembering Napier shot his, like when Vicky Vale's about to come out. Well, that would be from the first movie. Yeah. So was he wearing the turtleneck in both movies? I think he was. All right. So anything else Thank you want to you leave people with before we take off? No, we'll, we'll definitely update, like, in-game, hopefully, <laughs> with what we come up with. Thank you so much for being with us as we did this thought exercise and I hope come it through it. I hope it was Yeah, I hope it was entertaining to hear us go. Yeah. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have a segment uh, later on in the quarter uh, about, the act, about the visual representation of what they're working on here with our own Eddie Hilditch. Uh, working, he's, he's working on that right now, and we're waiting for him to get a little further down the line before we, uh, before we showcase it's, it. It's pretty awesome but, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been another episode of Reverse the Verse. Thank you again, as always, to Dave and Will for coming on the show and helping me fill an hour each and <laughs> Our every pleasure. week. Thanks yeah, so much. I, 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 I love these. You know, it, it's the, it, these things that get to show process you know, raw like this is some of my favorites, and I hope the folks who watch think so too. So, uh, yeah, and then uh, we'll see you again next week. Uh, we've uh, next week we've got. Uh, 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 gameplay mission designer Luke Presley, who's uh, we're actually going to go through the Pacheco mission uh, with, ah. with, with kind of director's commentary oh. from, from as Luke Presley, and uh, I think one more if you're going to take us through and tell us how they developed that. Like and, and so that's all. Sweet. Cool. We, it's another type of thing we've we've never done before, so we're going to give that a try next weekend. So. Oh, awesome! Good stuff. See you then, Michael Keaton. If you're watching, let us know. Yeah, let us know, Mike. <laughs> Thank you for watching. So if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows and you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.